was a close first half, but OU just couldn't come up with enough in the second half as Kansas pulled away 81-70. to I'm Brooke Pryor alongside here with Ryan Aber and Lloyd Noble Center in the aftermath of OU's loss to Kansas. Uh, we saw in the first half a really strong Sooner team. Ryan, what would you kind of see coming out of the gate from the Sooners? Well, I think the biggest thing was the energy that Jordan Woodard gave them when he came off the bench. He hadn't played since uh, December 17th in a loss against Memphis, but uh, had missed uh, was it, three straight games with an undisclosed medical issue that was non-basketball related, missed the game before that with an upper leg injury. But when he came into the game, the Sooners got a big energy boost, uh, not only with his play on the court, but just uh, the morale of him being back. Uh, the, we saw Lloyd Noble Center get as loud as it's been since last year's Final Four run uh, during that time, and that really helped OU get a comeback going. They were down nine a couple minutes after Jordan Woodard entered the game. Very quickly, that lead evaporated for Kansas as Oklahoma went on a 24-6 run to end the first half. Couldn't keep up the momentum in the second half, but uh, some really positive signs coming out of the first half of the Sooners. Right, and we saw in the second half Frank Mason the third really come on strong. I think he only had nine points in the first half and then finished with 28. So you kind of see that determination from him in the second half. Ryan, what did you kind of see go wrong for OU there in the second half? Well, I think the biggest thing, you mentioned Frank Mason. I mean, 18 of his 29 points came in a, the first 10-04 of the second half. He was just white hot coming out. I think Oklahoma's defense was sagging a little bit, and Kansas really took advantage of that hit. Uh, three-pointer after three-pointer after they were really struggling in the first half from behind the arc. Three of 11 before the break for the Jayhawks. They're not that kind of team. They hit a lot of shots uh, really quickly in the second half. I think it was six of 10 uh, from behind the arc just in the first few minutes uh, of the second half to, to really boost them. Got that 13-0 run really quickly right out of the gate. And then it just, uh, it, the OU never could quite get back in the game. They tied it once. Um, about four, or it was about six minutes six into the minutes into the second half, but uh, couldn't get over that hump and get the momentum that they had early. Right, and up next, OU's hosting Texas Tech. Ryan, what do you kind of expect to see out of that game, and where do the Sooners kind of go from here? Is Jordan Woodard, is, is he back? What, where do you kind of see this going? Well, it, I think it was really encouraging for the Sooners, Jordan Woodard's performance tonight. Seven points, five rebounds, five assists. Just a, a really solid overall game for him. He's a little bit rusty in the first half. I think he missed all three of his, his field goal tries in the first half. Got a little bit going there in the second half. But uh, he played 24 minutes tonight. I thought that was probably the most encouraging thing about his performance because he was able to play a lot. Uh, you would figure that he, there's a good chance that he could be in the starting lineup again really quickly. I thought it was interesting tonight that he played on the point and, and not off the ball. He, he came in. Uh, for Darion Strong more for Jordan Shepard when those guys were in instead of playing off the ball where he was before his injury. So that'll be interesting to see. But this is a game that uh, should be a game that Oklahoma could feel like it could pull off a win, and that would be a big momentum uh, getter for them after the 0-4 Big 12 start tonight was their seventh consecutive loss, but uh, showing some signs of life tonight. 13-0 run. Frank said he couldn't share with us what you said, but were you happy with how they responded? Yeah, I thought so. I, we, we were so passive, soft. OU was quicker. They were better than us I mean, the first half, without question. Uh, uh, and we didn't rebound at all. They didn't compete. Uh, second half, uh, you know, we challenged our guys a little bit, and they came out and they responded well. And I thought Speed was, you know, just jumping that first three and maybe start the second half, got the lead off for him. Little things like that make a big difference. And, and then, of course, uh, we guarded better. And, uh, Rebounded a little better, and, and then Frank took over. You know, and he was. I think Frank, Frank had 27 with like 10 left. Uh, uh, and only scored like one point the last 10 minutes, but uh, uh, he took over, and everybody else just kind of followed. How big is it to have a guy like Frank who can take over like that? Well, it's big. I mean, every team wishes they had one, and and, and uh, we've been pretty blessed. We've had some good players. But I don't know if we've ever had anybody that can score points in bunches like like he can be any better. And, when he and Devontae and Speed are shooting the ball, uh, and Legero too, although Legero did tonight, but when those guys are shooting the ball well from the perimeter, you know, it makes it pretty hard to go. Did, did, when you, you, did, did you think he was in that takeover mode and to start the second half that he had that mentality? Yeah, but to me, I, I can't read him. I don't, you know, and if you can, 
then you're only, if you think you can, you're only kidding yourself. Because uh, uh, nobody can. I mean, he's, he, he's, uh, he's a unique guy. He's stone faced. He doesn't show a lot of emotion. But, but, uh, but you could tell there was something different about him in the second half. When you uh, have a team that plays flat in the first half, uh, how much of what you do at halftime is to try to jolt them, and how much is it that you're just genuinely upset with what you saw? I'd say it's probably 50-50. You know, no, no matter what, you want to try to tell them how to attack better, whatever they're doing wrong. But, but also, uh, you know, jolt's a, a fine term. Uh, 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 and, and I don't know if they were jolted at halftime tonight, but certainly I tried to. You more pleased with the defensive effort or, or, or the offense in the second half? You know, I, I, I never get too giddy on it just because you make shots. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we executed better in the second half. I don't know how many turnovers we had, but we only ended up with 11, so we did a better job in the second half, but taking care of the ball. And, and, and when we didn't score, it appeared to me that we got the shots that we wanted and got it in tight or missed dunks or whatever it was. Uh, uh, so, so I was pleased that, with that, but I thought our energy level defensively was a lot better in the second half. You know, this is a couple of teams that's lost seven in a row, still trying to find mm -hmm. themselves. Just your thoughts on what the pieces they have and what they're trying to do here? Their, their pieces are, are, are going to be good. I mean, uh, I mean, they were better than us for 20 minutes, a lot better than us. So, so I, uh, you know, that, that game could have easily gone the other way. To me, they look like, uh, and I'm not, I'm not there every day, but to me, they look like uh, a, a bunch of talented young kids that are still trying to figure it out and, and, and not having Jordan, I'm sure, has hurt them. Uh, I thought he gave them a spark, even though he's not 100%. That was pretty obvious tonight, I thought. But I thought he still gave them a spark, and, and, and uh, they're, they're going to continue to get better as the season progresses. It's just the league's hard. It's, it's a hard league, and, and, and uh, when you're playing with young guys and, and, and you're off just a little bit, you're going against veterans that, that have been there and done that, it, it, it makes it hard. But, but they're going to be fine. Well, Baylor off <coughs> first half. Uh, I think we came out more aggressive on the defensive end. Uh, we rebounded the ball uh, the way Coach wanted us to the second half, and uh, I think that was the difference of the game. Frank, I think you guys were down nine at halftime, and then you opened up the second half with a 10 or 13 over. What was the message at halftime? Um, can't tell you the message, but you know, it was, it was, it was, uh, <laughs> I can't even say it. Uh, it was, <laughs> Coach got on to us, and um, I think we responded pretty well as a team. And um, we just got to come out better, start the game off the first half. What was the difference? I mean, you guys were a totally different team the second half. Um, I think the way we rebounded the ball, um, our help defense, and then I think we executed pretty well in the offensive end. Frank, for you individually, what changed between halves? Was it a mental decision to try to take over, or was it something else? Uh, nothing. I was just taking what the defense gives me. Uh, uh, I was just driving the ball down the hill, you know, create for my teammates and myself. I think you hit five or six threes. Did you feel, I mean, did it feel good on that long thing? Yeah, it did. Um, the first shot I missed, you know, felt good. But, um, you know, I was just in rhythm on every shot. And um, I think all the threes I made were pretty good shot selections. And, um, you know, I hope they continue to happen in the fourth. Josh, I've seen him for 16 games now. What do you think when Frank does what he does out there? Uh, it's just amazing, you know, one of the toughest guys in the country. Um, you know, we all trust him a lot, and when he gets to going like that, we all know, try to find him in transition, try to find him in half court, and he did a really good job today. Frank, Josh, how would you compare uh, Coach Self's tone at the half to maybe some other times? Um, well, he definitely got on to us, but, you know, he gets on to us a lot, and we all know that most of the time he's right, so. You know, we had to come out with more energy the second half, rebound, and play defense a little better. And I think we did that. Where's that rank for you guys in terms of halves you've played this year? One of your better ones? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, I think our second half was pretty good. And uh, that's the way we need to play every half moving forward. Frank, is this any more gratifying for you after fouling out here last year? Yeah, definitely. You know, uh, any win is, you know, uh, makes us happy. And, you know, Great start to the conference for and no, and um, we'll get back and watch film, see whatever we can do to get better, and um, just get prepared for the next game. Josh, this team has had the ability to kind of erase deficits and, and go on a big run in really short stretches. Does it ever surprise you how quick you're able to go on a 13-0 run in like three minutes? Well, today it did, but uh, normally now, uh, it's really supposed to start on the defensive end. Uh, we find that if we you know, just play really good defense and get stops, it's 
pretty easy to score on the opposite end of the court. Why did it surprise you more today? Uh, we, I don't know, how many points did we score? 13 at home? It just seemed like it came so fast, you know. Uh, coming out of the huddle after the half, we had just talked about, you know, there were no nine-point plays, so we didn't know how fast we were going to come back, but we knew we were going to do it. On that run, did you sense Oklahoma's defense breaking down? So it seems like they gave you guys some trouble in the first half, and then coming out of the locker room in the second. Yeah, um, I think after playing against them in the first half, you know, we kind of sat and just thought about a couple things that we needed to do, a couple weak points in their defense, and we came out the second half and executed really well. Hey guys, I know it's only January, but you're losing today. You guys have a shot at being number one. Does that mean anything to, to you all at this point in the season? It doesn't mean that much. I mean, it's a little pat on the back for, you know, all the work we've done so far, but, you know, we know that we have a long way to go. You know, it doesn't really mean that much right now. Anything else?